Hi and welcome to C Programming. In today's lesson we're going to learn how to implement the while repetition structure using sentinel controlled repetition. Now the question is what is sentinel controlled repetition? So in the previous lectures we talked about counter controlled repetition. Now counter controlled repetition we know the exact amount of loops that we will do. In contrast to counter controlled repetition, sentinel controlled repetition, we do not know the amount of repetitions. So let me quickly read a definition for you. Sentinel controlled repetition is sometimes called the indefinite repetition. I think that's maybe a better way of explaining sentinel controlled repetition. It's indefinite, we don't know, because it's not known in advance how many times the loop will be executed. It's a repetition procedure for solving a problem by using a sentinel value, also called a signal value, a dummy value, or a flag value, to indicate, indicate the end of data entry. So that's, in a nutshell, sentinel controlled repetition. So if you look at our flow diagram, there's going to be a condition. If this condition is true concerning the sentinel value, the code inside will be executed and this will re be repeated until this condition is false. And the sentinel value will control the condition outcome. Either it's going to be true or false. So let's quickly go to code blocks and C programming and see how we will implement this in a real world environment. So first of all, we're going to have an example where the user will input values into our program. And we will then accumulate these inputs and then calculate the average of the total amount of inputs. So let's see, see this example as test marks or marks being entered into a system and the average of all the marks will be calculated. So let's create a integer variable called input. And input will be used for the scanf to store the input from the user. Thereafter, we're going to use a while statement a while statement and we're going to say while input is not equal to minus one so we can enter test marks between 0 and 100 if the user enters minus one we can assume he wants to stop so while the input is not equal to one we're going to assume it's a mark between 0 and 100 we're going to add this to a sum variable so we're going to create a sum variable and this sum variable will be equal to zero in the beginning sum is then equal to sum himself plus the new input okay so sum will then calculate the total of all the test marks together. Then we will have a count variable. The count variable will be used to count the amount of inputs we will receive. It's not a counter variable that will control the amount of repetitions. It's a variable that will count the amount of repetitions we actually have. And this can vary from zero to wherever. So count plus plus. So now we have a sum. We can get the sum of all the inputs and we can count the amount of inputs. Then we need to actually ask the user for input. So we're going to use a printf statement and we're going to say input a mark 
and then we can give him some extra info that minus one to stop. Okay, so we have asked now with a printf statement to input marks, and then we can use the scanf to actually go and retrieve the input from the user. And that will be used. Then percentage D will be used. Remember your ampersand for the input. And then we have it. So we ask the user with a printf. Then we use the scanf to actually go and retrieve the input from the user. We accumulate the input, all the inputs together. We count the amount of inputs. And then after a while, after the input has stopped, we can then go and calculate the average. Okay. So let's quickly go down to calculate the average. Now, how would we calculate the average? First of all, we need to create an average variable. But wait, before we continue, the average variable is an integer. And we know that when we calculate average, we take the sum and we divide it by the amount of inputs. Now, in most cases, this will give us an answer with a comma value. So an integer won't work that good. So we need to use a floating value. So now we have average as a floating value and we have the sum divided by the count. But now we know that sum is an integer and count is an integer. So this calculation will give us a integer value. So we need to type cost one of them to a floating value. And type costing, we use round brackets and we say float inside those round brackets. So we type costing sum to a float. And then our answer, by looking at the hierarchy of data types, average will then have the answer of a float value. Then after that, we can say print if percentage if, and we can go and display the average. So we can say the average is, there we have it. Put in some new lines just to make it nice and neat. So let's hope this program works. So let's quickly recap. Input is a variable to receive the input from the user. Sum is used to get input and then accumulate the total amount of inputs. Count is used to count the amount of inputs from the user and then float average is to store the average. Then we say input is not equal to one. So while input is not equal to one, we're going to repeat this while until the input is minus one. And then we can stop, calculate the average and print it out to the screen. So fortunately, I've already seen a few mistakes, but let's see if we can see it by running it. And deduce what may be the problem. So five plus five plus five, we know it's 15. We're gonna add a minus one. The average is 3.5. So let's quickly think. Five plus five plus five gives us 15. The total amount of inputs was three values. I know minus one is there, but minus one is just a stop. So is that truly correct? 15 divided by three doesn't give you 3.5. It gives you three. Yes. Okay. So first of all, we've got a problem here. When we scan if the minus one, we increment the counter. 
as well as that minus 1 is added to the sum. So what do we need to do? We need to add that 1 back to sum. The minus 1 is added to the sum, so we plus 1 to take away that minus 1 effect. And count will be 1 bigger than the actual input. Okay, let's see what happens if we run it again. Let's say 5 plus 5 plus 5 minus 1 to stop and the average is 5. Lo and behold, I think that will be the correct answer. Now we know that what we can do is we can also add between the percentage and the F. We can add 0.2 to make the output just a little bit neater so that there's no five zeros of the comma so it's 5.00 so that's nice now one mistake still in this code there's one small mistake you won't pick it up if you're a beginner programmer but if you're a little bit more advanced you will see this mistake input is not equal to minus one so in the beginning we didn't initialize the sentinel value to a certain value. So, if we did not initialize input, we don't know what's the actual input value at this current moment. So thus, we need to go and initialize it, let's say just to zero to make things easy. So now if we run it, we will see 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 15, plus another 5 is 20, minus 1 gives us 5. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a sentinel value input that is controlled not by us, the programmer, but rather something else. And in this case, the user. And this sentinel value controls the amount of inputs. So if we want to have quite a few inputs, let's say 5555555, or only one input, We have the control as the user, but the programmer does not know what's the amount of loops. So this sentinel controlled loop will work according to what the sentinel value is. And then we can go and calculate the average by using basic calculations and type casting it and displaying it. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. While statement using sentinel controlled repetition. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.